Hi everybody, what is up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm really excited to talk about today's topic. This is going to be easy ways to de-bloat and I'm also going to be talking about my journey with chronic bloating and how I fixed it. I want to say I did work alongside with a holistic doctor, but I'm going to kind of take you through my journey. And then also if you're not suffering from chronic bloating, I'll be talking about tips that have helped me now that I'm fully healed that just help with like normal day-to-day -day bloating, the type of bloating that does not hurt. And I also just wanna say too, bloating by the end of the day is normal, like your stomach expanding a little bit by the end of the day. You're eating, where does the food go? It goes into your stomach. So having your stomach expand throughout the day and not looking the same when you wake up as when you go to bed is normal. Having your stomach be extremely huge, hard as a rock or in pain, that is not normal. And that is what I was experiencing back in the summer of 2020. And that is when I, I started working with my holistic doctor in December of 2020. So basically my stomach problem started in January of 2020. I was out to eat with my mom and I had gotten a veggie wrap and my stomach just was tearing itself apart. I was in so much pain and that happened to me very freq frequently throughout um, quarantine. It happened to me throughout the summer. I was just doubled, o doubled over in pain a lot of times. If I ate certain foods like eggs for one thing, that eggs were something I was so intolerant to. I could not even eat them. Now I eat them every single day with no problem. I just had a lot of random issues with every food I put in my body. So I was eating like 900 calories a day because I was in so much pain. I had no hunger cues from under eating for so long. Like it was, it was such a struggle and it was so painful and my skin was breaking out super bad. I was super, super upset all the time. I had really bad mental health at that period in my life. I was gaining weight. I remember going on a little road trip with my friends and you know, we were in the hotel room both nights and I was just in pain, like crying, like wanting to go to the emergency room because I was in so much pain and I didn't know what was wrong with me. So I've, I've struggled. I've had my fair share of my stomach having a lot of issues. All hot girls have stomach problems, period. So I went to a gastro and I got blood work done. I also went to a gynecologist about it. Well, I was at a gynecologist because I had a UTI. I've only had one and it was during quarantine. It was so painful and like trying to get into a doctor's office in March of 2020, it was tragic. It was freaking tragic. I had gloves, I had a mask on, like I didn't want to touch anything. It was, it was bad. But I remember asking her and basically, I mean, it's out of her scope of practice. So that's, it's fine that she didn't give me good advice, but she was just like, try and just eat like fruits and vegetables like eat healthier and i'm like thinking to myself like i literally eat so like healthy and it hurts like i don't know what you want me to do and you know it was just tragic and then i had gone to my like normal doctor same thing they were like well everything seems fine and i was like okay well i'm like in a lot of pain like no one was taking me serious and you know a lot of people would, be, would tell me like did you cut out gluten and i would say yeah i cut out gluten like i don't eat it and i'm still in pain and then they'd be like did you cut out dairy i'd be like i haven't had dairy in months like you know since it started happening i would like not have it but when i did have it it wouldn't affect my stomach do you know what i'm saying it was like the most random things at the most random times there was never a correlation between why this was happening and then I went to a gastroenterologist, am I saying that right? A gastro. And they were like, you seem fine. Let's get your blood work done. Let's get you a ultrasound and find out what the problem is. And I was like, period. And I'm like, there's definitely something really bad wrong with me. Like I knew I was not good. I was like, there is something so bad here and I'm like so scared. And so I gotten blood work done and I was eating like all the foods that I typically eat because if you don't eat gluten or don't eat dairy but you have an allergy to it or an intolerance or whatever, it won't show up because it's not in your system. So I ate like all the, the typical foods, got my blood work done, nothing was wrong. They're like, nope, everything's fine. Got my ultrasound, they scanned through my whole stomach all for all my organs they're like you're fine and so i had no answers they were like here's indigestion pills here's a really strength strengthy uh strengthy <laughs> really strong probiotic and they were just trying to fiend pills on me and i was like i'm not taking indigestion pills i have never had stomach problems my entire life now all of a sudden i have these stomach problems like i'm not just gonna take a pill for the rest of my life that is full of random things to fix my problem you know what I'm saying like it's not even like a supplement I was like what is this gonna do and I was taking a probiotic already and I was taking like 
I remember I was taking like papaya pills. I don't know what papaya something. I don't know. I was taking that. I was taking a probiotic. And I think I was taking one other thing, but I cannot remember. I remember watching Mariana's video about like the supplements she took to heal her gut because she worked with like a specific type of holistic doctor. And so those were the ones I was taking, but I was still experiencing it. I'll leave a link to her video down below. She doesn't have gluten or dairy anymore, but that was the video that I had watched and that's what helped me like get some stuff for my stomach. I then, in August, that was when that happened. I was super upset because no one had answers for me. I read a book called How to Heal Your Metabolism by Kate Deering, and it basically brought to my attention that certain foods don't react well in our bodies, and there are certain foods that we should stay away from. So I, sorry, there's something in my eyeball. I'm going to see if I can get it. So I read through that whole book in a day. It was an audiobook, and it basically talked about the importance of well-sourced dairy, grass-fed meat. It talked about the importance of bone broth, raw carrot salads, like all of these holistic practices that I have never really heard about before. It taught me about how certain foods react like in our bodies like certain ways she's very someone who eats a lot of root vegetables and that's something that I do because it doesn't hurt digestion like when I tell you I couldn't eat vegetables for months of my life I'm not even kidding like I did not eat <laughs> like I barely ate vegetables like I had potatoes and carrots like those are the only vegetables I would eat and I'm still kind of at that point where unless I really cook down vegetables I don't eat them because they really upset my stomach and like even though they're healthy good for me you know what I mean? We assume like we can have them, but we're all individual people and we can react different to different things. And that was something that I really had to learn and understand. That book is something that I have read twice on audiobooks and it kind of taught me about how nuts and seeds react in our bodies. It just taught me a lot of things that I didn't know and it gave me a really different perspective on health and nutrition. Then from there in December, I was like, I'm either seeing a gynecologist because my hormones I know for a fact are out of whack because I was experiencing real bad like mental health still. Like it just kept plummeting worse and worse. I was super, super down in the dumps and my acne was really bad. And I was like, okay, something is off. And so I scheduled a gynecologist appointment and then I also scheduled for a holistic doctor. And that was like something that I was like, I know that this is kind of like woo woo type beat and no one's gonna understand and it's not covered by insurance and I'm taking a risk by doing this, but I had no hope left because everyone had told me I was normal and I was in so much freaking pain all the time and I was so sad and my skin was so bad and I was not fitting in any of my pants just in the stomach because my stomach was so inflamed. I really just like my quality of life was it was not hitting anymore and so I invested into holistic health so I started doing nutrition response testing and I go to a doctor still I see him every few months now and it turns out there was a lot wrong with me and I literally cried because I was finally validated in all of my pain my adrenal glands were weak my spleen was weak my large intestine was weak I had a tonsil infection I had a bacterial infection in my entire body, probably from something that I had eaten, and I'm trying to think what else was wrong. Basically everything. My digestion of carbs was off, like, I had a magnesium deficiency. There was just a lot of stuff that was wrong with me. And so we worked together to fix those problems by giving me standard process supplements, and I still take them to this day. My doses have come down on all of them. But I literally have never felt so good in my life. My energy finally skyrocketed. So this was from December 2020. I worked with him week by week. Like every week I would come in for 12 weeks. And then I've been seeing him, you know, every two weeks and then every four weeks and every six weeks, eight weeks. And now we're at the two month and then... Yeah, eight weeks was the two months and now I see him every three months. So just for like basic checkups to see if anything's wrong. And if I ever like I'm feeling under the weather, I will go to him rather than my normal doctor. And he's amazing. If any of you know me personally, definitely reach out. I will set you up. I've had my autistic brother now goes to him. My mom went to him. My friends go to him. My boyfriend goes to him like I have set so many people up like with this man my boyfriend was struggling a ton to gain weight and he also was struggling with stomach problems as well and 
my holistic doctor was able to fix that and now he's been able to like steadily put on weight so i know that this was a super long like journey with my gut but it really was something that I struggled with for so long and I felt hopeless. <laughs> so now if this is something, now if you're at this part of, in the video and this is something that you don't deal with, like chronic <laughs> bloating, these are my tips for helping with just like the normal day-to-day -day bloating and just feeling a little bit unlike yourself um, and not in the way that you're in pain. Just different tips that I use now that I have a normal stomach, a normal functioning stomach. These are the things that I do to just like minimize my bloating. Again, like there's nothing wrong with your stomach expanding throughout the day. Mine still does too. But these are definitely things that make me feel my best throughout the day. They're good for your internal health and you know, makes me feel good externally as well. So the first thing is drink enough water. I know that this is probably something you've heard a ton, but you wanna make sure you're drinking enough water. If you're not, you can definitely experience an increase in bloating. This may also lead to constipation, which also leads to bloating. So we wanna just make sure everything in our bodies are being super regular, so things are just flowing freely so that we don't have extra bloating. And of course, if you are away for a weekend or you know, you're know you eating in a way you normally wouldn't for an event like something's coming up you're gonna feel a little bit more bloated so it's just important to be like drinking enough water and replenishing your body especially if you drank maybe the day before you want to make sure you're really focusing on water because those things do dehydrate you as well as if you're having a meal that is salty you're also going to hold on to some water as well so it's just important to drink more water to help that go down i know i feel like i feel like that doesn't make sense like oh my body's holding on to water like why am i going to drink more but that's what you got to do the second thing is eat more or less fiber so when i'm eating too much fiber i get bloated and everything gets a little little stuck but when i'm eating too little the same thing also happens so there's like a happy medium with fiber i would say around 25 to 28 grams a day is a really great place to be at for your fiber for the day i typically do this by having a fruit or vegetable with all of my meals and that seems to be the best thing for me and has helped a lot with bloating and as well as my acne those things it's just helped a lot and you could also get fiber and whole grains as well aside from fruits and vegetables so for breakfast i'll usually i did a what i eat in a day as my last videos you could literally check it out but i'll do like a fruit for breakfast and then a fruit with something as a snack and then the rest of my meals will typically have a vegetable in it um and then the third thing is assess sorry i have like a list on my phone the third thing is assess intolerances and sensitivities so an example cauliflower is a good it's a it's a vegetable it's good it's great we love it but having too much of it can immediately bloat you um cruciferous vegetables as well those are ones having in excess or having uncooked especially can really affect your gut i'm someone who is not not a bestie with um cruciferous vegetables and i also want to mention too i heard this in a podcast so don't fact check me on it but Cruciferous vegetables, if they're not digested well, can actually be anti-thyroid, which means like they're not good for the function of your thyroid. So I'd really recommend if you're having cruciferous vegetables, if you feel like they're not doing the best for you, cook them down, minimize the amount, and try to just go to stuff that is less inflammatory for you. Like again, root vegetables, as I mentioned earlier earlier in this video, like carrots and potatoes, zucchini, squash, like all that, have been really great choices for me as well as asparagus, green beans. I'm trying to think. I think the and then cook down kale. Those have all been like good for me and I have not seen any negative effects from having those. And then my fourth thing is eat smaller meals more frequently over huge meals. So this is something that I notice with a lot of people who track if they don't get on top of their eats for the day and then it's late at night and they have to eat like a thousand calories worth of food, they'll feel super bloated and they'll even feel super bloated the next day. And it's just really important too to like make sure that you're splitting up your meals throughout the day like especially if you track and stuff like that you want to make sure you're eating this is what i would recommend and of course like everyone's lifestyle is different this may not be accessible to everybody but eating smaller meals more frequently over having huge meals so for me having three ginormous meals a day to hit my protocols and like be at maintenance does not make my stomach feel its best rather than having like three you know three main meals in the day but then having a few snacks in between to lessen the load of those three meals helps me a lot with bloating so i'm not feeling constantly stuffed i also don't really eat i don't eat until i can't eat anymore i, I typically make my meals in a way where i'm satisfied satiated 
and then I go a couple hours and then I get hungry again that's typically how I do it and also just giving your t yourself like time to digest like not consistently eating and like never giving yourself time not eating something that can also affect your stomach like you want to like eat when you're eating stop and then eat you know a couple of hours later and stuff like that and obviously like if you're out and about or you're at an event that may not be the case right so i'm just saying like in a day-to-day -day basis when you're like in control of these things and then my fifth thing well there's going to be kind of two points one is make sure that you're sleeping enough if you are not sleeping seven to eight hours a day you might experience an increase in bloating because your body needs that extra rest and time to do its thing and then the fifth thing is going for walks and just being more like active throughout the day and again if you can like if you can go for a walk let's say you work from home still you know on your lunch break like maybe go for a little walk or something like that um if you're taking a phone call at work and you can walk around like just being more active i've noticed helps me a lot with my bloating like 100 percent so that's everything i hope that that could help of course if you have painful bloating as i said go to a professional don't be just listening to me but this is just like the normal day-to-day -day bloating that i see a lot of clients experience as well as something that i've experienced too after healing my gut so thank you guys so much for watching give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed be sure to subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye